Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about Site B. Specifically, the relatively untold truth about dinosaur poaching that used to take place on the island. In the Jurassic Park movie franchise, the fate of Isla Sorna was, at first, far different from what it was in the Michael Crichton novels. At the end of the second movie, the dinosaurs were given a pretty unique fairy tale ending where all of the animals would coexist with one another on Isla Sorna. Animals like the Stegosaurus and Tyrannosaurus rex would move into their own social groups and create natural ecosystems that were far different from what they were millions of years ago. And for the first time in the planet, creatures from different eras like the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods would live in balance with each other in one location. Unfortunately, while that does sound like paradise, things would not stay like this for long. In the fifth film in the movie franchise, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, we're told early on that when Mount Saibo erupts, it would bring forth an extinction level event that will kill off the last living dinosaurs on the planet. With Simon Mizrani's theme park being operational since 2005, this would lead us to believe that the second island, Site B, was in a far different state than last we saw it in 2001. Or at least that's what the public seems to believe if we take the BBC news seriously. Previously I've mentioned the great dying off of Isla Sorna in videos that have gone into detail covering something that Ian Malcolm dubbed the Chaos Effect. This was a terrible event that caused many species to die off on the island. As of this recording, most in-canon scientists believe this was due to the illegal introduction of the highly aggressive Spinosaurus and other illegal species that can be seen in JP3. However, this is not the only problem that Site B would face in the years following its transition into a wildlife preserve. In fact, not too long after John Hammond worked with the Costa Rican government, people would illegally attempt to gain access to the island in order to witness engines dinosaurs for themselves. This type of behavior can also be seen in the third Jurassic movie, where some of the trespassers of Los Cinco Mortes would simply try to capitalize off of the island's unique opportunity for tourism, while others would come with far different agendas in mind, the most deadly of which happened to be dinosaur hunting. If we go into the Canon Dinosaur Protection Group website that was started by Claire Deering, we get a lot of information surrounding Isla Sorna's well-being in the years following Jurassic Park 3, and some of it contains some rather dark info such as the following. Mizrani had been passionate about wanting the best for the park's animals, honoring his vow to engine founder John Hammond to help them live safely and in peace. But after the world learned of their existence and rumors of poaching vessels spotted around Isla's Nublar and Sorna, Mizrani sought to bring Hammond's lost dream to life. The operation to move the surviving animals from Isla Sorna to the park site on Isla Nublar was critical to their well-being. So, this tells us that immediately following the events of Dr. Hammond's death, people would illegally move into the islands in an effort to hunt and kill the surviving dinosaurs. This type of behavior is very similar to what we see go down with Roland Timbo in The Lost World. And if access to Isla Sorna was always as easy to breach as it was in Jurassic Park 3, then this type of trespassing was probably a very serious problem for the animals. Now, despite this information on dinosaur poaching coming directly from the DPG website, believe it or not, that's actually not the first time it's been discussed in the movie canon. Just three years earlier in the timeline, information was given to the public on the Masrani Global website that revealed dinosaur poaching had been a problem on Site B for quite some time, and it was in fact Vic Hoskins' job to stop it. The description of the engine security page tells us the following. With the number of reported Central American poaching vessels increasing in the Mortes Archipelago over the last year, Engine Security Division, headed by Vic Hoskins, has been busy ramping up operations in the Gulf of Fernandez. We don't have the capacity to take things for granted around here, Vic says. While some of our work is assisting the staff at Jurassic World, we also have a memorandum of understanding with the United Nations to monitor activity on Isla Nublar and its neighboring islands. Poachers have been known to risk their own lives working in the service of ruthless collectors. It has also been reported that some individuals have been responsible for mishandling captured specimens, with disturbing hospitalization cases on the Costa Rican mainland. So this sort of information tells us a lot about dinosaur poaching on the islands. It seems that not only were people making their way to Site B in order to hunt dinosaurs, but they were also sent out in service of ruthless collectors who sought to capture some of the animals for their own means. It looks like most of them didn't get too far, however, seeing as a lot of these cases led to terrible attacks that put people in Costa Rican hospitals. And I'm guessing those were probably some of the only ones to survive. 
After the death of Vic Hoskins and the fall of Jurassic World, I'm sure a lot of this behavior ramped up quite a bit. With no one to protect the animals or even prevent people from going back and forth to the islands, who knows what happened post-2015. Ken Wheatley's men seem to have built a pretty sizable presence on Isla Nublar in a relatively short amount of time in Fallen Kingdom. And that was a full three years after the Indominus broke out. Like I mentioned earlier, the film adaptation of Isla Sorna was far different from what it had been in the novel. Instead of the dinosaurs peacefully coexisting with one another, Ian Malcolm would soon discover that Site B's inhabitants were constantly at war with themselves. By the time his group arrived to the island, some species were expected to have already fallen back into extinction, and a ravenous group of velociraptors were being held responsible for the systematic destruction of not only other species, but also themselves. This was mainly due to issues like cannibalism, a deadly disease that would spread across the island known as DX, and the notable lack of parental figures being present. To get the next iteration under control, it needs to form a familial bond with a closely related genetic link. English Henry. It needs a mother! The Jurassic World trilogy seems to be taking a lot more of its inspiration from the Crichton novels than what the original Jurassic Park trilogy did with the big exception of the first movie, of course. And I happen to know for a fact that what happened to Isla Sorna in the movie canon was actually purposefully done to reflect what went down in the original source material. Interestingly, Vic Hoskins makes it known that in the past year before the events of Jurassic World, an increase in Central American poaching vessels were making their way to the five deaths, which means that some hunting parties were still of the opinion that Site B was a valuable area to mine. And this is well after we heard of the first population drops taking place. In truth, we've never been given a definitive answer as to whether or not Isla Sorna is barren. We know that it took a serious hit following the events of the Lost World, and we see it being easily accessed by people in Jurassic Park 3. But the island's exact status has never been fully disclosed to the public. Perhaps this is because not everything died so easily. I mean, the second film's tagline was, something has survived after all, so it wouldn't shock me to learn that there may still be species left on that island, or perhaps any of the other neighboring islands. In Fallen Kingdom, the public is left believing that Site B is a lost cause, and the attention is placed directly on Nublar when Mount Saibo roars back to life. But there's still one chapter left for Colin Trevorrow to tell us in the Jurassic World saga. And while the focus will most certainly be on the mainland, I have a hunch that Site B may play a pivotal role in the final part of the new trilogy. But as for its current standing, the island was ravaged by a shifting ecosystem, animal infighting, and illegal dinosaur poaching. These are events that we can see play out dramatically in both of the first two Jurassic Park sequels, and it looks like the island's well-being only continued to escalate further into the future. Now, with all of that being said, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on this information. The ending of the Lost World Jurassic Park is a truly nostalgic and satisfying conclusion for me personally. However, as an adult, I realize that, realistically, the idea of a dinosaur sanctuary is something of a naive fantasy, especially after reading the Crichton novels. That's not to say that I no longer like the idea. I'll always love it. But I definitely think my young, impressionable age has a lot to do with that. I've spoken to fans of the franchise that were far older than I was when they first saw The Lost World. And after having read the novel, it was understandably unsatisfactory to fans of the Crichton verse where at the end of that story, all of the dinosaurs are doomed to die and fall back into extinction. A lot of that source material has found its way back into the movie canon with the new films. And interestingly, the door has still been left open for Site B to have its true history come to light in the future. Poachers are still attempting to make their way into Isla Sorna, which means that despite an inevitable danger being at the dinosaur's doorsteps, life may very well have found a way and the island may just still be brimming with life. Now, I'd like to know what species you personally think have survived on the island, if any. And also, what kind of creatures you think fell prey to man? If I had to guess, I'd say many of the big guys may not have made it. But smaller species, especially the likes of Compsognathus, which I've said over and over again, might just be harder to get rid of. But now, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my in-gen executives. 
I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all even continue to watch these videos. And I want to thank each and every one of you for all of your continued support. Now, I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video and hope you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you on the next one, guys. And as always, take it easy.